In terms of non-invasive ventilation, uh, we have uh, CPAP or NAPPV started at birth uh, in all babies at risk of RDS. So here I would slightly differ that NIPPV at birth we can delay till you make the decision on surfactant use. So as I mentioned in the other video on pragmatic approach, I'll link it with this video as well. So if you start NIPPV, you may start giving higher pressures in a baby with RDS uh, without the surfactant from which they would benefit. Of course, if you are in a resource limited setting and you are monitoring closely, you can use NIPPV but if you are in a developed country and you are not limited by resource limitation, better to start with CPAP of 6 to 7 and if oxygen requirement is rising or if the work of breathing is increasing and you think baby needs an APPV, better to give surfactant by uh, LISA or ensure before you uh, go to an APPV. So uh, babies less than 30 weeks gestation who do not need stem incubation for stabilization, you start with this. Non-invasive ventilation with early surfactant by LISA is considered optimal management. So this is a big shift over the past 10 years or so. There is no role for prophylactic surfactant but early rescue by LISA is suggested. The system delivering CPAP is of little importance. So bubble CPAP, infant flow driver, ventilator CPAP, they all work similar. Uh, slight differences will be there. You have to use, use what works best for your setup. The interface should ideally be a short binasal prong or mask with a starting pressure of 6 to 8 cm of water. Ability to escalate an IPPV will reduce the need for invasive mechanical ventilation in some infants. So obviously they are acknowledging that NIPPV is better than CPAP alone and that's the experience most of us feel. Uh, there are discussions about the interface for NIPPV whether RAM cannula can be used. We have used RAM cannula but you do need uh, to increase the pressures to offset the resistance that the circuit provides and usually we see that RAM cannula NAPPV is a little less effective compared to NAPPV with the ventilator provided interface but it is still better than CPAP so you have to titrate and use according to what is available to you. BiPAP devices confer no advantage over CPAP alone. Uh, so this is again bi biphasic CPAP uh, using the VIAS uh, device. The infant flow driver works a little better, you can recruit more but the effectiveness is not going to change much. Synchronized NIPPV if delivered through ventilator can reduce the need for ventilation or need for re-ventilation following extubation and it may also reduce BPD. Uh, we also acknowledge the role of high flow nasal cannula as an alternative to CPAP. In the text the others say if the unit has enough expertise you may be av avoiding the use of uh, CPAP or NAPPV but again it does appear clinically a little inferior to NAPPV or a higher level of CPAP. So if the baby is in the evolving phase of RDS it's better to go for CPAP or NAPPV and then step down to high flow once we know they are stable. Uh, high flow works on babies who are stable on 5 cm CPAP or below. It's uh, based on what we have experienced. Again the point about how long to keep the high flow don't be in a rush to wean the smallest babies off the high flow or CPAP. When they are evolving with the feed progress, the reflux and the intermittent hypoxemic episodes will be reduced if you have an option to recruit the lung volume or support the babies from de-recruiting quickly. So keep a pressure of 3 to 4 cm uh, with I mean 3 to 4 liters flow with high flow or 4 cm CPAP. Uh, for babies under 32 weeks or under 1.25 kilos, still they cross this threshold. When they are free of intermittent hypoxemic episodes, then you take them off, then you are likely to stabilize them better.